everyone. This is Stuart A. Swerdlow for Expansions.com Video News for the first week of December 2011. And today I do have quite a bit of information to share with you. Um, one is a little bit of an expose. Well, maybe actually a couple of things are a bit of an expose. And then some follow-up information. Um, as some of you know, back in November, uh, we went away to an Atlantean cruise where we looked at uh, the remnants of Atlantis, and I know that is already posted now on the website expansions.com, so I hope that you will take a look at that. But on the way there and on the way back, uh, we flew uh, to uh, Fort Lauderdale uh, with um, Southwest Airlines. And on Southwest Airlines, uh, depending on the kind of ticket you get, they give you a drink coupon. And there were four of us that were going, my wife and I, who are allegedly adults, and uh, two of my minor children, uh, ages uh, 15 and 12 and a half. And when we got the boarding passes, uh, which, I, which I did get online, um, and of course when you do get the tickets, you do put in the uh, travel numbers, the ages of the people, the names, etc. I did get, for my minor children, drink coupons. Yes, Southwest Airlines gave a 15-year-old and a 12-year-old coupons for, and I quote, a beer, wine, or liquor. And so uh, there you have it. If I gave a coupon like that to a minor child, I would be arrested and accused of child abuse. But apparently, Southwest Airlines is uh, above all that rules and regulations, and minor children can get drink coupons, but as you can see, I kept them, the children did not use it, and uh, I just wanted to use it as a souvenir so I could show you that bit of information. Um, as a bit of a follow-up story, I know uh, a week or so ago I gave you information about how Islam is being uh, attacked on the Western media, and especially uh, the country of Pakistan. Well, you may know that uh, a week or so ago, uh, NATO forces in alignment with the United States attacked uh, Pakistani forces at the border with Afghanistan, claiming that they did not recognize where the border really was since it's ambiguous in that part of the country, and uh, they killed 24 Pakistani soldiers. So in response to that, Pakistan has demanded that the U.S. vacate an air base in Pakistan, and uh, the U.S. is in the process right now of vacating that uh, air base in Pakistan. And this can only lead uh, to Pakistan uh, joining the list with Iran as being terror nations and supporting terrorist activities since they have uh, booted the U.S. out of the military base, which uh, is quite understandable uh, given the circumstances. So I wanted to bring that to your attention. And then also this week, I came across some information that might be uh, old to some of you, but it was new to me and to many of the people that I've spoken to. And it's uh, the hidden history of Barack Obama. And as you know, I have been reporting for weeks and months about his uh, birth certificate, where he was really born, uh, what is his nationality, who is he, what's going on. You might remember I mentioned uh, four years ago or so when uh, I was uh, with some uh, uh, KGB people who in East Asia told me that they knew for a fact that Barack Obama was a Soviet setup, a mind-controlled robot sent into the U.S. in order to destroy it. And I want you to keep that in mind as I read some of this uh, information to you. It's it's quite a lot of information. It's it's a lot of pages, and those of you who are members of my website and have uh, uh, some, uh, you're signed up as a member, uh, this information is listed in its entirety in my December 2011 newsletter. So those of you who are interested in this uh, detail, please uh, go to my website, expansions.com, and sign up for uh, membership and also for the forums. Uh, this information uh, is by an anonymous uh, person, but from a very reliable source. Um, and the person quotes from H.G. Wells, who was a socialist. He quotes from the book, uh, The Invisible Man, which was published in 1897. 
And of course, there was a 1933 movie made about the Invisible Man. And in the film, the Invisible Man says, and I quote, an invisible man can rule the world. No one will see him come and no one will see him go, unquote. And of course, before 2004, most people in the United States never heard of Barack Obama, and certainly people in the rest of the world never heard of him. Um, and it says here that uh, uh, his ascendancy to the presidency um, and his rogue administration has done everything in their power to, and I quote, undermine, sabotage, and destroy the United States of America. And, in fact, this article and information goes on to state that uh, Obama is the result of a scrupulously planned and brilliantly executed coup d'etat. If you remember, I had written many years ago about a Soviet plan called the 39th move. And in that plan, uh, the 38th move was the dissolution of the Soviet Union into the 13 republics so that it could accumulate the uh, uh, international uh, uh, empowerment, international uh, investments so that the infrastructure of those 13 um, republics could be built up and then they would suddenly join back together um, and create a new Soviet Union, which as you know, Putin and Medvedev have recently um, said they want to recreate a Soviet Union. Uh, they're calling it uh, a pan-Euro-Asia group, but they're only inviting the former Soviet republics in, so it's another form of Soviet Union. Um, and the 39th move was the takeover of the United States without firing a shot. So keep that in mind also. What do we actually know uh, as far as Obama, what uh, his background is, what information documents do we really have? And the long list is on my website in the newsletter that you have to sign up to get. But I'll read you some of them. What we have here is a certificate of live birth, which was released but proven to be counterfeit. We have Indonesian adoption records in the name of Sotero, which was his uh, former name. We have a Pakistani passport in Obama's name and a passport from Indonesia. Interesting, two Muslim countries. There is no baptism uh, certificate. Um, so his background is a little bit ambiguous. Now, here's where we get to some of the very fascinating information. There is a blogger in Vermont by the name of Martha Trowbridge. And she is uh, a credible researcher uh, who's been known for many, many years. According to her, um, and information that she's releasing and has released already, some of it. And let me give you this information. According to her research, this is documented, Obama is the son of the American-born black revolutionary Muslim leader Malcolm X and his American-born and white Jewish teenage girlfriend from the Bronx by the name of Miss Joanne Newman. Obama's actual name is Bari Malik Shabazz, and his birthday is not August 4th, 1961, but October 28th, 1959, so that he's not 50 years old, he's 52 years old. So that sheds a whole new light on who Mr. Obama is, and if um, his real birth mother is alive, as Martha Trowbridge claims she is, Miss Newman would be approximately 68 to 70 years old uh, right now. So uh, that is very fascinating information. There are no, according to this information, no biographies of Obama except for what is written here is a fictional autobiographical account called Dreams from My Father, in which the author, Jack Cashel, has proven in his book Deconstructing Obama was written by a former domestic terrorist and personal friend of Obama by the name of William Ayers. And it was not actually written by Obama, Obama, uh, Barack Obama. So that actual, actually, uh, this story about him is fraudulent and concocted and has become the truth that people are reading about. Um, and if you were to take, and I'm going to try to do this for you with the limited uh, pictures that I have here. 
But if you were to take a picture of uh, Malcolm X and put it next to a picture of Barack Obama, who's seen here with Fidel, uh, uh, Malcolm X and Fidel Castro and uh, Barack Obama, if you take off Malcolm's glasses, they look identical. So if you can see that. You know, when I first saw pictures of Barack Obama, I said, you know, where, where do I know him from? He looks so familiar to me. Then I realized, when I saw this, um, that's Malcolm X right there. Uh, so very, very interesting information there. Uh, I also wanted to say, OK, uh, here, here's some really other fascinating information. In 1988, Malcolm X's lawyer and former Manhattan Borough President Percy Sutton was asked by Dr. Khalid al-Mansur, the principal advisor to one of the world's richest men, who was a Saudi Arabian, to write a letter to Harvard recommending Obama. And Mansour, it seems, paid for Obama's tuition. And there's a reference to this with documentation that I have in my newsletter. There is an attorney by the name of Stephen, P Stephen Pidgeon who has written a book named The Obama Error. And according to uh, attorney Pidgeon, uh, he believes that Obama's degree at Columbia University was actually purchased from that uh, university and never he never actually attended the university. And he cites that the fact that absolutely no one at Columbia remembers uh, Mr. Obama at all. He also points out that Barack Obama gave his presidential speech, acceptance speech, in Denver, Colorado, an Illuminati headquarters, on a stage that was a replica of the Pergamon altar, which has historical links to Adolf Hitler and the Nazi party. And so I'm going to show you, here is where Obama gave his speech. Here is where Hitler gave his speech. They're identical. They're replicas. One is the replica of the other. That's pretty interesting, don't you think? So. Um, Here's the most interesting one of all I found in this uh, volume of information. There was a man uh, by the name of Tom Fife, who from uh, 1992 to 94 was visiting Moscow and Russia very frequently because he was starting a software development company uh, and a joint venture with Russian scientific community members. And during the trip to, in 1992, he had dinner with a very high-level uh, uh, Russian government person and that person's communist wife, even though the Soviet Union had fallen already. It's still communism, really does exist there. And the wife, during dinner, and she wasn't drunk, supposedly, said to him, uh, this was 1992, well, I think you're going to be surprised when you get a black president very soon. What if I told you that you will have a black president very soon and he will be a communist? This is what the woman said to him. And she also said, and I, I'm taking uh, sentences out of a, of a long uh, speech here, he is intelligent, he is half white, and has been raised from the cradle to be an atheist and a communist. She also says, and this is very interesting, have no doubt, he is one of us, a Soviet. And she insisted, he will be a blessing for world communism. We will regain our strength and become the number one power in the world. And you know what? That's already happening. As I mentioned, the Soviet Union is coming back together. They're getting bold and brave and doing things that they wouldn't match, match, uh, necessarily do uh, previously. And another interesting thing is uh, in the last trip to Russia, President Obama was photographed placing his hand over his heart when the Russian anthem was played, but when the American anthem was played, his hands were at his side. Very interesting uh, turn of events there. But now it gets even more weird. According to this information, there may actually be two Obamas, like the evil twins. One may be the son of Malcolm X, and the other one is what they're calling the Indonesian Barry. And the reason they're saying this is because Malcolm X was called to Indonesia back in the 1960s by President Suharto. Um, 
when Americans were not allowed to go to Indonesia because of its uh, leanings, um, and apparently may have helped pluck the uh, notion of uh, having uh, an Obama or a son of uh, uh, Malcolm X to be groomed to be president of the United States and then have an Indonesian double, as we know, like Saddam Hussein had a double and, and so did uh, Gaddafi and all the others, uh, to, uh, to fool the country. And according to this, and it's very, very uh, complicated if you look at the features that you see on, on, on Obama in the different photographs in the news, there's different features. On one, he has like a pointed kind of ears, the other kind they're round. On other words, he has purple type lips like Indonesians have, the other type, another time they're brown. And uh, here is a picture of one of uh, uh, the Indonesian leader's sons next to Obama. This is the Indonesian. This is Obama. You really can't tell the difference, can you? And here's a picture of the Indonesian leader and Obama. I can't tell the difference. So, there may be an evil twin. <laughs> an evil twin in the White House. Uh, an Indonesian version, and uh, uh, the son of Malcolm X. Very, very fascinating, I think, don't you? Um, and a little bit scary, because if this information is true, and I'm, I'm leaning to the fact that it is, that means there's no more United States. It's not the USA, it's the USSA that will join with the USSR in the not-too-distant future. So... Do your research, read my newsletter, read the details on the December 2011 newsletter from Expansions. You do have to sign up in order to get that uh, uh, newsletter. So go to expansions.com and sign up. And I also want to mention to you uh, that in January 2012, from January 15th to the 21st, I am doing a hyperspace oversold training session for one week where I will train you to do the work that I do. And I do invite you to attend. Please contact Patricia at events at expansions.com to get all the details and registered and all that information uh, given to you. Uh, I will see you again very shortly. I'm off to Dubai and Africa, but I should be back for Christmas time. And it's been my pleasure during this year to be of service to you, and I look forward to continuing. So until next time, this is Stuart A. Swerdlow for Expansions.com.